Should we send him to therapy so that he can unpack all his daddy issues? Or we should send him straight to jail for harassing one of his employees? Tough one. We cannot risk him pushing yet another woman down the stairs and trying to gaslight her afterwards, so jail time it is. So hello. Today I was once again in a mood to film something lighthearted and fun and I thought why not rank book boyfriends, book husbands, essentially love interests in romance books. And not only romance books, we have quite a variety going on here. And we have, I think, around 50 books and most of them are quite popular. Because let's be honest, I'm nothing if not a victim of booktok, booktube recommendations and viral books, all right? Before we start though, I have to say this video was absolutely inspired by Nikel from Nikel's Noob. I love Nikel and her content so go check her video out as well and now let's dive in so first let us go through the tiers i have going on here so the first the most superior tier is loml the so love of my life or soulmate material so these are the fictional men i have fallen in love with they charmed me they swooned me. I can definitely see each one of them becoming long-term partner. Our next tier is called It's Not You, It's Me, friend zone in the brackets. So essentially I will place here all the men that are perfectly fine. They are green flags. They treated FMC in the book right. Just me personally, I wasn't necessarily attracted to them. I can befriend them, but I would never cross that line if you know what I mean. Then we have casual fling aka one night stand tier. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. So these are all the men that have certain charm about them, but casual one-time thing is all they are getting for me. Then we have gave me the ick tier. Again, pretty self-explanatory. I mean, considering how picky I am with everything in my life, especially men, we can expect this tier to be quite bad. Urgent need of therapy. Well, I think there is a chance for men in this tier to be in healthy relationship, not with me though, with someone else, if they undergo therapy. Finally, we have jail time. So these are all the men that are menace to society. I wouldn't touch them with a 10 foot pole, that kind of vibes. So yeah, these are our tiers. Now on to the ranking itself. This is fun already. So let us start with the romance queen herself, Emily Henry. And I'm essentially gonna go in order of me reading her books. So first we have Charlie from Book Lovers. And the thing is, people love Charlie. I'm aware of that. People love this book. For me though, I guess Charlie was fine. He definitely had a certain charm to him. And I would invite him to my flat, but I honestly cannot see myself having a long-term relationship with him. So casual fling it is. Next, we have Alex from People We Meet on Vacation. Do you know what's funny? People We Meet on Vacation is actually friends to lover story, but if it had been up to me, I think Alex would have never stepped out of friend zone. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. It's just Alex is fine as a friend, but the whole not confessing your feelings for 10 years straight is not necessarily the most attractive thing to me. So yeah, straight to friend zone. And then we have Win from Happy Place. And do I even need to explain myself? asking for a friend. Don't get me wrong, the guy definitely needs therapy. But you see, don't we all? If I'm willing to come up with excuses for a man, I guess he belongs to the top tier. And then we have Gus from Beach Read, and Gus is probably my favorite Emily Henry boyfriend. I think, yeah, we can say that. I mean, the guy is smart, he's sarcastic, and he's caring. I see it's just perfect in my eyes. All right, then we have Wes from Better Than The Movies. And I think we can all agree that Wes is basically a walking green flag. He's such a nice guy, but because the book is essentially about teenagers, I cannot imagine myself with him, <laughs> you know what I mean? 
I just simply cannot look at him this way. So he goes into friend zone, I guess. And same goes for Ravi from a good girl's guide to murder. The guy is a gem and for some reason, romance subplot in a non-romance book. Oftentimes it's so much better than romance in actual romance books. Anyways, I'm not sure how old Ravi is, but I cannot put him anywhere else besides it's not you, it's me tier. Essentially, the older versions of Wes and Ravi would have made it to love of my life tier but alas I'm gonna go ahead and say something Leo DiCaprio never said in his life you are too young for me guys so next up we have Taylor Jenkins Reid and I didn't put all her books in here although I have read all of them I just put here two of her most popular ones so first we have seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo and we are tier ranking Harry and I know the guy is not interested in me or in any other woman for that matter. But I just wanted to have him here, to have an option to tier rank him, to be his bestie, essentially. So yeah, he goes into our second tier. And then we have Billy from Daisy Jones and the Six, the lead singer of the band. And Billy needs a therapist, so does every woman that he was romantically involved with. Sorry. Next, we are ranking Abby Jimenez's book boyfriend. So we have Daniel from Part of Your World, Jacob from Yours Truly, and Justin from Just for the Summer. And without any doubt, we're just gonna go ahead and put all three of these guys into our top tier. Because if there is one thing that Abby Jimenez knows how to do is that she knows how to write perfect fictional men. All three of those guys are caring, thoughtful, creative, truly romantic just impeccable. Seriously, if you're looking for a romance to read, just check out Abby Jimenez. She has slowly climbed up to the top of my favorite romance writers of all time. My absolute favorite though is probably Justin. Seriously, the guy is the definition of if he wanted to, he would. So I'm gonna put him in the front here. Okay, dokie, next we have Ali Hazelwood and first up is Luf from Bride. And you know, if it wasn't for the nodding stuff, I would definitely have a one night stand with him. It's just this nodding stuff. It's not my thing, okay? No judgment though. So do I put him into friend zone? You see, he also gave me the ick because he was talking way too much during sex. Um, so I guess we can befriend him. And as his friend, I would get to do all the werewolf and nodding jokes. So I think we're cool. Okay, so Jack from Love Theoretically is a different story, all right? I enjoyed this book immensely. And if I'm being honest, Jack is probably why this book works so well for me. So I have to put him in love of my life tier. I mean, the guy is smart and attractive, he's tall, which we get reminded of this fact on every fifth page, but okay. The smart was good, so I think, you know, he deserves to be up there. Then we have Sam from Every Summer After, and this is essentially a second chance childhood friends to lovers story, and Sam was cute, he did nothing wrong, he was kind of a green flag if i'm being honest it's just i don't think that he can make it to the top tier for me i mean the competition is rough we have jack and justin and jacob you know what i mean so i think we gonna have to friend zone him next we have elliot from love and other words and this book is essentially a copy paste of every summer after or it's the other way around i'm not sure which one of these books came out first but elliot is not quite as unproblematic as Sam. Essentially, there is a certain trop in both of these books, which I detest with my entire heart, to be honest. And while Sam was the victim of the situation, Elliot was kind of the problem himself. I don't know if I'm making any sense. I'm trying not to spoil anything. So long story short, Elliot probably goes to gave me the egg. Yeah, I think that's fair. So next we have some classics here, The Hunger Games, and we are ranking Pira, not Gale. As much as Pira is the greenest flag ever, he was definitely written by a woman. He was just not written for me. So I'd say it's not you, it's me, Pira. Well, then we have Edward Cullen from Twilight and he goes straight into gave me the egg. I know my 13 year old self is screaming, crying, throwing up right now. She feels extremely betrayed, all right? But you know what? 
He is a creepy old guy obsessed with a teenage girl and I'm still not sure how that icicle thing he has in his pants works so yeah came. So now let's get Colin Hoover out of the way too. So we have both It Ends With Us and It Starts With Us here. Although I have only read It Ends With Us, it's just I wanted to rank both Ryle and Atlas. So essentially It Ends With Us represents Ryle while It Starts With Us represents Atlas. And Ryle goes straight to jail. I mean, I think at this point he's beyond therapy. We cannot risk him pushing yet another woman down the stairs and trying to gaslight her afterwards, so jail time it is. When it comes to Atlas though, I mean, the guy is quite unproblematic. He's a self-made, attractive chef. He's caring and not too pushy, no pun intended. I mean, he's supposed to be the opposite of Ryle, right? So I can see how for someone he can make a long-term relationship material. Just for me personally, I cannot fathom the idea of having a boyfriend named Atlas. So I think we can safely put him into friend zone. Yeah. I guess he would make a good friend. Then we have Ledger from Reminders of Him and the guy gave me the egg because he had empathy for the FMC of this book and wanted to help her simply because he found her attractive and wanted to get into her panties. Also dating the girlfriend of your deceased best friend. I don't know man, I'm not necessarily vibing with that. Then we have Too Late by Colin Hoover. And to be honest, I'm still pretty traumatized after reading this book. And just to be clear, we are rating Carter, not Asa. If you need an explanation why, go watch my video dedicated to this book. Anyways, Carter was an undercover police officer and he was just so unprofessional and stupid. Everything that he did and said was just cringy and icky. So gave me the ick, definitely. Then we have Jeremy from Verity and he goes straight to jail. I mean, I don't even have to think about it twice. If you read this book, you probably understand why. And if you didn't, I'm afraid explaining it would be considered a spoiler. So yeah, just take my word for it. You're gonna wanna stay away from this guy. Then we have Miles from Ugly Love and Miles definitely needs therapy. But you see, even with therapy, I just do not think that he's a good guy. I mean, we can say that pretty much about every Colin Hoover male protagonist, so what's new, right? Yeah, I'd say we should send him to therapy and hope for the best. And I'm not quite sure why I have November 9 here, because I haven't read this book. I mean, I guess I have heard enough about this book to tear rank the boyfriend, so jail time. I mean, if you're familiar with the plot of November 9, you won't probably judge me. Then we have Leon from Flatshare and this book is a sweet cute rom-com and Leon was quite nice. He's just not the type of guy that can get me personally into my feelings so I would friend zone him easily. Then we have Logan from Mindfuck series. I mean the guy was an FBI agent tasked to catch a serial killer, but he was just too stupid to understand that he was dating a serial killer. I don't know, I was not necessarily attracted to him, would not befriend him either. So probably gave me the ick because he was a bit too dumb to understand certain things. Then we have Jamie, a librarian from the very secret society of irregular witches. Jamie was fun, it's just I'm not necessarily attracted to overly grumpy, introverted men. You see, I'm used to being a grumpy, introverted one in a relationship, so it's not you, it's me, Jamie. Then we have Bo from Out on a Limb, and Bo was super sweet. He was almost too sweet. And I know I will almost always have something to complain about. But the thing about me is I don't like to be overwhelmed by someone's love or attention. I get overstimulated and I think Bo would definitely overwhelm me. So I just have to put him into friend zone. Then we have Fast and I know this is a bit of a lesser known book. It's basically a bit dark second chance romance and the MMC of this book, Sean, was 
honestly pretty great. It's just, again, personal preference. I mean, he cannot compete with all the men we already have in our top tier. So I have to put him into it's not you, it's me tier as well. Next, we have Shane from 7 Days in June by Tia Williams. And this is kind of tough because, you see, this book is one of my favorite romances of all time. But... While I think Shane is perfect for Eva, the FMC of this book, I think he's perfect for her and her only. Me personally, I would not be able to deal with emotional baggage. Also, he's kind of a bit old for me, so... I'd say it's not you, it's me, Shane. Matter of fact, it's both of us, we are just not compatible. And exactly the same thing I would say about Josiah from Before I Let Go by Kennedy Ryan. I mean, he's perfect for his wife. And I wish them eternal happiness, okay? Also, too old for me as well. I mean, you can tell that I do not like age gap romances. And another book by Tia Williams that we have here is A Love Song for Ricky Wilde. And this is a pretty new release. It came out in February of this year. And in contrast to Seven Days in June, I absolutely hated this book. And the MMC of this book, Ezra, he... I don't know, he was fine, I guess. There was nothing special about him for me. He was just a mediocre man. But without spoiling anything, I think after everything that he went through, he probably needs therapy. So let's just leave him here. Next, we have the infamous fucking around. And this is a why choose romance. And we have 800 pages of pure smut if you're into that. Check this one out. For me though, all three guys from this book felt extremely icky. So yeah. Then we have Carden from Cruel Prince. So if I'm being honest, Carden is kind of hot. But once again, I'm not out here banging teenagers. So let's be friends, I guess. Although as his friend, I would probably have to be careful about all his skimmings and his betraying nature. But on the other hand, I get to have a fave friend, so that's cool. Then we have Get Alive, Chloe Brown, and our MMC is red. He just gave me the ick. I mean, nothing major happened, no prominent red flags, just not my type, all right? Then we have Ivan from Seven Years Sleep, just like Bo from Out on a Limp, he's too lovey-dovey and i am sure he would overwhelm and overstimulate me so he has to join Bo in the second tier next up Aaron from the spanish love deception and as much as i dislike this book and i found it incredibly boring and cringy at times i think Aaron specifically was quite honestly fine. He was caring and supportive and all was well until he went ahead and said, I want to feel you milking me, baby. And immediately I'm out the door. I can physically feel the ache, all right? Then we have Rowan from Fine Print. And with Rowan, I'm not sure, should we send him to therapy so that he can unpack all his daddy issues? Or we should send him straight to jail for harassing one of his employees. Tough one. I'm not feeling quite kind today, so I think jail time it is. Then we have dating Dr. Dill and the name of the guy was Dr. Prem Verma. I had to Google this. I mean, all I remember about this book that it was quite fun and the smut was good, but the guy... Honestly, he gave me the ick. He was just too indecisive. Then we have Matt from Before We Were Strangers by Rene Carlino. And I know a lot of people love this book, but I'm not gonna lie, Matt was kind of a red flag. I did not like how he behaved, especially in the second part of this book, how he treated the FMC and accused her of some of the stuff that she allegedly did. I don't want to spoil anything here, but essentially Matt just gave me the ick. Honestly, I would not look at him twice. Archer from Archer's Voice, once again, very beloved book and book boyfriend, but to me, Archer just gave me the strongest ick ever. I think I have even mentioned it in my Goodreads review back then. I just imagine him saying, I try you, jump scare. Because that was their thing in the book, they would say, 
I bree you, I archer you instead of I love you. And I'm sorry, that's just not romantic for me. I'm not in 10th grade anymore. Then we have Dean from Wedding Crusher. This is a fake dating romance. And the guy was essentially trying to marry the girl he didn't love so that he could essentially tick a box and dedicate himself fully to his law firm and to his career. My standards are quite a bit higher than that, so... Dean gave me the egg. Canon from As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow. Um, I did not like this guy. I'm sorry, I just cannot be in any kind of relationship with someone who values his own life and lives and well-being and mental state of his loved ones so so low it's just i personally do not understand and i do not vibe with people who are willing to sacrifice themselves for the sake of their country or politics and things like that that's just not my thing and i don't want to get too too much into that so yeah then we have Connell from Normal People. I mean, we can all agree that he needs to undergo therapy. He really, really does. But at the same time, I sort of think that I can maybe fix him. And the fact that Paul Mescal is playing him in TV series does not help either. Do you know what? One night stand and we go our separate ways. His way hopefully leads him to a therapist though. Sam from tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. I mean, pretty much everybody in this book needs therapy and Sam is no exception. So I would gladly send him to a therapist and be happy for him once he fixes all his issues and is ready to be in a healthy relationship. Well, we are almost finished here, so bear with me. We have Zayden from Fourth Wing, the shadow daddy. So if I'm being honest, I think Zayden is quite fun, although he can be too pretentious and self-important at times for absolutely no reason which can be borderline icky but i would still consider him for a casual fling i think that feels right yeah next up francis from mexican gothic and i did not enjoy this book nor did i enjoy the romance between noemi and francis i think it was dry and quite forced and it's clear that francis needs therapy. I mean, the man grew up in a haunted house, so therapy it is. And finally, we have Josh from You Again. I don't know what to say about Josh. He was quite mediocre. Once again, he had his issues, but overall he was nice and cool. Let's friend zone him, I guess. I don't know. And that is basically it. We only have six boyfriends in the top tier here. And I tell you what, these are the only men that my husband has to worry about when it comes to me. You know what? Let me rearrange them a bit so that you can see my top three. Yeah, I guess that feels right. So my top three fictional men are Justin from Just for the Summer by Abby Jimenez, Gus from Beach Read by Emily Henry, and Jacob from Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez once again. And as I predicted, Gave Me the Ick tier is quite overcrowded, but you know what? So is the friend zone tier, surprisingly. So yeah. Anyways, that was it from me. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. And also do let me know in the comment section down below if you want me to tier rank something else maybe. If you have any ideas, I'm honestly up for anything. And think about subscribing to my channel to never miss an upload for me. And stay safe and I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.